How's that possible? Where is it? How challenging is it? Discover the answers to all these questions in this video. Firstly, I need water material, and from that I'll create a material instance. Don't fret if you're unfamiliar with the distinction. The material instance is essentially a child of the main material, enabling us to manipulate the material using exposed parators rather than constantly adjusting nodes within the main material. While the main material houses all the logic, we can have multiple material instances with different parameters. I've set the material to single layer water. This allows me to utilize single layer water output and maintain material opacity, which is more efficient compared to translucency. I'm also employing pixel normal offset for refraction. Now, starting from the top, I'll create and integrate the necessary parameters. The first one is base color. I press and hold the 3 key and click to create a vector 3 node, then right click to convert it to a parameter. Following that, I press the S key and click to create scalar parameters for metallic, specular roughness and opacity. All four should fall within the range of 0 to 1. I then add a node to control waves known as Flow Map Simple. As I don't see it in the list, I open the content drawer, navigate to the All folder, and search for it. I drag and drop it into the material. The next step involves adding a normal map to add wave details. I'll provide a link in the description for you to download it. I've got it from Unreal Engine so you are free to use it in UFN. Right click on the texture sample and convert it to a texture object. I need to input two more things, flow direction and texture scale. Again, I press and hold the S key to create scalar parameters and name each of them. To combine X and Y into a vector 2, I use the append node. This allows me to control both directions separately. Same goes for texture scale. I combine X and Y and then multiply that with the texture coordinate node to control how many times the normal map repeats. I press and hold the L key and click to add a LURP node, which blends between two values based on the alpha input. In the B input, I connect normal and alpha is controlled by a scalar parameter named normal strength. In the A input, I connect vector 3 and set blue channel to 1. Now refraction. I'm using pixel depth and dividing 100 by this node. Then I use a saturate node to clamp a value between 0 and 1 and multiply it with a scalar parameter, 
which will act as the refraction intensity parameter. Finally, I add one and connect it to the refraction output. What's left is the single layer water output. I create a vector 3 and convert it to a parameter. Then I multiply the top output with the bottom one. RGB will control color and alpha will control intensity. It's the same as creating a separate scalar parameter, but here I keep it all in one place. I divide it by 100, so that I won't need to work with huge numbers. All this goes into the absorption coefficient output. And that's it. This is sufficient for me to achieve a decent looking water effect. If you want, you can duplicate the last three nodes and connect them to the scattering output for more control. Don't forget to rename duplicates, but keep in mind that additional instructions will make your material more expensive to render. I'll use a simple plane to check how the material is working. As you can see, the result is already quite impressive. With Alpha, I can control intensity, so more absorption means a darker color. Water absorption creates the opposite color to what I select. Don't worry, it works fine. It means that the color I chose gets absorbed, leaving me with the opposite color. With two tiling parameters, I can now control the scale of waves. And with flow parameters, I control flow direction and speed. Metallic can add more reflection, but also makes the material darker. Normal strength directly controls the intensity of the waves and works closely with refraction. If I set normal to zero, I won't get any refraction as well. Refraction controls how much an object gets distorted under the water. With opacity, I can control how much of the base color I want to add.
roughness and specular control the glossiness of the material. You can play around with all these parameters to create cool looking liquids. I'm aiming for something that looks like a liquid jelly. Now I'll add a landscape spline to use later as my river. If you need to know how to work with splines, check out my video about paths link in the top corner where I go through the process. I've disabled rise and lower terrain and enabled painting terrain with sand and lower fall off. And last but not least is disabling collision or the player will walk on it. On top of this spline, I'm adding a river spline from the Fortnite folder and going through the process of matching points with the landscape spline. I need to make sure this river spline follows my initial spline as closely as possible. This river will be used as a swimming area. So if it is too high or too low, my player will swim above or below the water, which isn't ideal. Now back to the landscape spline to add a mesh for our river. I use a Fortnite straight road, which fits the purpose just fine, but you can use your own mesh. Finally, I add a river material instance. Because the road mesh isn't flat, my river is a bit higher than the Fortnite river, so I'm going through the final height adjustment. Now all that's left is to select the Fortnite river, scroll down and remove the tick from the visible parameter. This is enough to make this river invisible but keep the swimming functionality. Save and launch the session. And there you have it, our custom river with swimming functionality. It will lack the underwater post-processing effect, but it's still better than nothing. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, please click that like button and subscribe to get notifications about future video releases. Thanks for watching. See you soon.